Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is the Belief Buffet, part of Hug Nation. And today I want to talk about plans for my funeral, he says with a cheery disposition. So I have a series of things that I want done at my celebration of life. Should there be one? I hope there is one. Maybe I'll even have a celebration of life before I die, because, boy, I would sure like to be present for that. But just in case I'm not, I do have a list of things, and I realize that although I did leave instructions years ago that maybe I should restate those instructions, update them, and so I sent out an email to a few of my friends with, hey, here's a link to a doc word doc with something I want read at my funeral, some instructions for my ashes, uh, something I want printed uh, to be either out and available to read at my celebration of life or maybe just burnt with me. Um, I don't want to be buried. Also instructions that I would like to be cremated after my organs and whatever can be used can be used. In fact, I will say in the future, if we have need for the protein of deceased humans to feed beings in the world, you can use my, my flesh in any way that is productive. So if Soylent green, fine. Feed for pigs, fine. Fertilizer for a tree, great. If not, cremate and take some of my ashes to the Burning Man Temple. And then I have a short list of people that if you have any other thing that you would like to do with my ashes or distribute them or put them someplace or plant them, then I trust you to do whatever feels right, as long as a little bit goes to the Black Rock Desert. And so I wrote this thing to read at my funeral, maybe 10 years ago. I was on my way to an ayahuasca ceremony and I got in a car accident. Not a big deal, you know, fender bendery thing, but it was scary. And it did snap me into that realization that life is precious and accidents happen and any day could be my last. And I thought about all the grieving that might happen, not like, oh, people will miss me, they'll grieve, but no, I mean, my parents which are still alive and they would, they would, they would be devastated, obviously. And a number of people that are important to me would be devastated. And, and so I thought, you know what? I have some thoughts about my feelings about death that I would like them to know while they're going through their grieving process. So I'm gonna read that. Should I die of unnatural causes, an accident or something like that? Please read this. Or perhaps play this, play this video. Maybe this will be even better to hear my voice say this. My life has been full beyond my wildest expectations. Do not mistake its length for its content. I never thought I would make it past 30. So I've been in the bonus round for a while now. My death was not tragic. I have fully embraced a certain level of risk with regards to my choices and behavior. I can't imagine what kind of life I would have had if I had played it safer, but it would not have been mine, and I can be pretty certain it would not have been so amazing. My life has had crushing depression, prestige, notoriety, admiration, growth, and a whole lot of love. It's a life I would risk dying for. I believe that my life was a rare gift a chance to experience a singular consciousness as a human being. I have now rejoined the infinite consciousness and all is perfect. I was born into privilege and enjoyed freedom, intellect, and bitchin' metabolism. I was deeply aware of these gifts and did my best to show humble gratitude while sharing them. I didn't, at least consciously, want to die, but I am totally at peace with it. I recognize that my passing will cause pain for those I care the most about. I'm deeply sorry. Your pain is the only negative about my death. 
I hope you know that I am a part of you, just as Grandpa Caleb remained a part of me after he died. Thank you for allowing me the freedom to live like I did, to take risks and make crazy choices. I always cared what you thought, but in the end, I followed my heart. Thank you for loving me enough to let me. I may not have wanted to die when I did, but I definitely didn't want to live forever. I did good things. I learned so much. I loved deeply. I had amazing relationships. I'm proud of my life. Being John Stin is such an amazing ride. And it was such an amazing ride. Thanks for being such an important part of it. My love for you will ripple through the cosmos always. With endless love, John Halcyon Stin. Now, hopefully this will not be viewed or listened to for many, 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 many years. <sighs> but just in case, that's what I think and that's what I believe. And that's the peace that is in my heart. So wherever you are, give yourself a squeeze. Oh, and be grateful for this body, grateful for this moment, grateful for this gift of consciousness and all the wackiness and uncertainty and moments of doubt, as well as all the moments of elation and ecstasy and love and triumph. And know that everyone on this planet is having the same menu of experiences, highs and lows and victory and defeat. And in that shared humanity, we can find connection deeper than our beliefs or our politics or our allegiances in that awareness of our shared humanity, our oneness, sharing this miracle of consciousness on this incredibly fertile planet. And in that place of oneness, let's join in this moment, take a deep breath, send out a squeeze, feel me and everyone squeezing you as you squeeze us. Hold it. Release. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and each one of you beautiful ambassadors of love, thank you for being here for this hug nation.